Oh, hey! As you can see here, I'm stuck in the Sonic 1 title screen, but that's actually very fitting because today we're gonna be ranking the 2D Sonic games. Starting with my least favorite one, and we're gonna end with the best 2D Sonic game ever. This video is gonna cover the home console 2D Sonic games, because most of the handhelds are like in these mini sub-series of their own, so I think it would make more sense to rank those separately, I might make those videos too in the future. Plus, I don't really want to play the Game Gear games right now, so this is how we're doing it. Let's get started. We have seven Sonic games to rank here in this video. I mean, I guess it's technically seven, because one of these games is like in two parts. What do I mean by that? Well, why don't I just show you while we start with Sonic the Hedgehog 4, Episode 1. Sonic 4, Episode 1? What? Just, what a weird game this is. First of all, they break up Sonic 4 into two different games in episode 1 and 2, so that's already a bit odd. But then part 1 just seems like a mediocre fan-made Sonic game. First of all, there's a lack of originality here. All the zone themes, boss battles, and even just enemies are reused from previous Sonic games. Like that's a lot of borrowed stuff there, pretty well all the assets in this game. All this causes the game to have less of an identity compared to the other Sonic games. But even though it has all these similar features, it doesn't even feel as good to control as the classic games. The physics and momentum just feel off. Like, whatever you change to your guys, just revert it back to the old way. You know, like, this game looks just like a Sonic game, but it doesn't feel like one. It just feels like a generic 2D platformer when controlling it. Honestly, okay, at the end of the day, there's just nothing to this game. Sure, it has most things that the other games have, but just to a lesser degree. It's just so unoriginal and uninspired that I really have nothing else to say about it. Now we gotta take it back to the classics and look at the Sonic games on the Sega Genesis. And... I mean, we're talking about classics here, so you really can't get much more classic than Sonic the Hedgehog number one. The Sonic game that started it all, the one that caused this entire 30 plus year old franchise to still exist, and the one that is a lot more rough around the edges than I remember it to be on recent playthroughs. Like alright, let's just say the zones here are very hit or miss. It has a great intro, awesome intro in fact, it's Green Hill Zone. I guess it was so awesome that they decided to remake this zone in like every other Sonic game after this, but that's besides the point. Green Hill Zone is a well designed area. But then you get to Marble Zone where there's randomly a lot of waiting on these slow moving platforms, and then after that there's Labyrinth Zone and damn, this zone just straight up sucks. In fact, when you get here, just delete your save data and go play Green Hill Zone again, that'd be more enjoyable. Okay, that was a joke, this game doesn't have saves, but maybe that's intentional, huh? They just want you to play Green Hill Zone. Like, alright, there's definitely still some great levels later on in this game too, but there are way more bad and clunky stages in this game that really bring down the whole package. It's almost like some of these levels are fighting against the fact that Sonic is super fast, making it awkward to control him in these precise tiny platforming areas. Plus, oh boy, does it ever feel clunky to go back to a game without the spin dash? You can just get into some really annoying situations situations where you're just trying to get up the slope but you can't and it's just so slow, ugh. Sonic 1 will always be iconic, but the sequels definitely outshine this one. So this next game we're looking at here is a sequel, I guess, or it's just like the second half of a game. I don't know, it's confusing. This is Sonic the Hedgehog 4, but episode 2 this time. 
Basically, they took Sonic 4 Episode 1 and made it into like a decent game, I guess. The zones are a big improvement. They all have actual original themes this time, and they're pretty sweet themes too. Like the snow level in this game isn't just the snow level, but it fused snow, Christmas, and a theme park all together. It's even got this really cool part where you're just speeding along roller coaster tracks, and come on, that just feels like a very sonic thing to do. And then some of the other levels had some interesting level hazards that you had to avoid, which was always fun too. Plus, there's actually new moves in this Sonic game. Yeah, I know, crazy concept. They're in the form of these Tails moves here. You can just summon Tails at certain points, and he'll help you out and whatnot by flying you around and performing other moves. Probably the most useful one is swimming with Tails, as it makes it way easier to move around underwater. And then I feel the physics are a bit better in this game than in part one. Yeah, it doesn't feel as off as before, making it play out more like a Sonic game. Still though, this game isn't like groundbreaking or anything, but it's a fun little Sonic adventure. While it still doesn't reach the highs as the other 2D Sonic games, at least it has its own identity and somewhat new ideas in it. The next game here is not only a pretty sweet Sonic game, but it also represents an innovation in video game technology. I think. This is the Sonic game that was first released on a disc, appropriately titled Sonic CD. Now this is a weird one. It's a good one, but oh, it is a weird one too. Like the level design is crazy here. Just look at all this crap everywhere. They really up the visuals and the amount of stuff on screen now. The big new concept in this game is the past and future element. You'll randomly see these signs that you pass by, and when doing so, if you build up enough speed, then you'll transport to another version of this stage, but in a different time era now. This is actually a really cool concept that definitely adds to the craziness of this game too. Then, you also have this new move to use that I call the figure 8 running technique. It's basically the same as the spin dash, except it doesn't protect you like that move. However, you'll go way faster using this versus the spin dash, so it's a bit of a trade-off. And while the spin dash is still the better of the two moves, this one is definitely more fun. Like use this move and then keep jumping and running forward and see what happens. However, the craziness, while cool, is also what is this game's detriment and keeps it from being placed any higher. Like it can get so confusing as to what is going on at points. There are so many different paths and routes to take that I got lost way more times than I should have in these levels. Plus, the visuals of this game add to the confusion. While they do have a lot of detail in them, there is also so much going on at many times, so you can't differentiate the background from the foreground or just what's what. Like, I swear they wanted to cram every little detail into each frame, so half of the time, I don't even know what I'm looking at. This makes it hard to differentiate what are enemies, interactable elements, or even just what's a platform. Wait, what? Those weren't platforms and are part of the background too? Ugh. However, even with those complaints, when this game gets good, it gets good, and has some great highlights throughout the game. Now we're getting into the big boy territory with the top three games, and regardless of the order I put these in, these three are almost like a cut above of the rest of the games on this list. So, let's look at Sonic 2. This game is just really solid, man. That's about it. The levels here are simply super well designed and fun to play. Everything flows nicely here, and you rarely get just stopped dead in your tracks from the layout. Plus, the level themes are awesome, with some absolute classics like Chemical Plant Zone. I love this factory that makes this unnamed purple liquid. Or there's other great ones, where you're cosplaying as a pinball while you plink around and fly everywhere. And speaking of 
flying everywhere, I guess. This game has a super great sense of speed, uh, more so than probably any of the classic Sonic games. There's many instances of these giant slopes or boost pads that you can use to reach pretty crazy speeds for the Genesis. And then it is a lot of fun trying to maintain these speeds throughout the rest of the level. Also, the music in this one is amazing too. I mean, I haven't really talked about the music so far in this video, cause pretty well all these games have great music, so it would get kinda redundant at this point. But this one is especially great, so I had to mention it in this section. Plus this game made a lot of notable improvements compared to the previous game. Things like having two acts per zone instead of three, which really helps the pacing and gives you more zones to play through. And oh yeah, this is the debut of Tails, probably like the third most famous Sonic character. But this guy actually made the gameplay more enjoyable, since he could collect rings for you and attack enemies even. Sonic 2 is a total high speed blast and an awesome 2D Sonic game. You know what time it is, we're down to the final two games in this ranking here. Sonic 3 versus Sonic Mania. The battle of retro versus, like, modern retro. Sure, the number two spot goes to Sonic 3. Yes, Sonic the Hedgehog 3. And Knuckles, I guess? This is like two games I'm putting here together because they were supposed to release together, so the second game is like DLC for Sonic 3. I don't know, that's what everyone else says online, so blame them, not me. But anyways, like wow, did these guys ever go all out for this game. With three mainline Sonic games appearing on the same console, this one truly feels like they're changing up the formula a bit and adding even more new elements. Take these new power-ups for example, the shields in this game. These are a really cool addition to the classic Sonic gameplay. All of these shields give you an extra useful move as well as allowing you to take another hit, so these can be very valuable when playing. It also makes it more rewarding to look for secrets now since a lot of these are hidden in certain areas as well. Then we get to the levels in this game and man are they ever great. Complete with a bunch of awesome and new level themes here. I also like how they just flow naturally into each other now. Like at the end of all the acts, you do your little dance, showboating or whatever, and then after that, you just move right and things continue on. Then, for example, at the end of Angel Island Zone, you'll have this boss fight right in front of this giant waterfall and it's pretty awesome, but then after the fight is done, you see Knuckles up here trolling you or whatever, because he then drops the bridge you're standing on. So you fall down the waterfall, which leads you directly into the next zone being Hydro City, a place that looks to be underground with a water theme. This just makes the game feel like one big connected world rather than just separate levels like the last games. It's clear that this game is super polished, and a lot of things went into this, making it one amazing Sonic game. Sonic Mania. Is there any wonder as to why this is the best 2D Sonic game? It's literally designed to be that. This game takes all the best parts from all the classic Sonic games, removes the more tedious and dated elements, and then adds a bunch of new features that work perfectly with the classic formula. Just take a look at some of the new ideas in these levels here. All these elements allow for a lot more unique gameplay interactions that couldn't be done to this degree in the classic 2D Sonic games. And the new level themes themselves look gorgeous and are very creative as well. I love this snow autumn themed level here with these red tree leaves that contrast very nicely with the white snow. So you'll see both leaves and snow falling at the same time. This game is just super exciting to play since each level always has had something new to offer, so you always wanted to see what the next level does differently. Also, I like how they brought back some of the classic Sonic zones, but they also included brand new areas to this game that blend seamlessly with the old ones. However, they didn't just copy the layout of the old levels, but rather added new elements to spice up these zones and make them play out better in a modern 2D retro game, whatever you call this. 
So it's like what Sonic Generations did, which is kind of weird that they did it again, but this time it's completely focused around 2D levels, making the level design a lot more focused. Yeah, so Sonic Mania is pretty well the perfect adaptation of the classic Sonic levels being brought into the modern 2D platformer era, which for me at least, makes it my favorite 2D Sonic game. Oh,